how did you um, kind of pull up after that one, given it's, it's been a while since since the start and, and just general thoughts on, on the past couple of days? Yeah, no, uh, carcass is all good. Just the lungs are heaving, um, like usual. But yeah, pulled up pretty pretty sweet today. Obviously, two o'clock game, so we jumped in the pool straight after the game. So probably fitted um, me quite well, uh, to be honest. But yeah, mate, yeah, tough old batter out there. Um, yeah, obviously they played a lot, lot with a lot of passion, put us under a lot of pressure in that probably first thirty minutes, and we probably didn't adapt as well as we liked. But um, I think with the crew that we had. Um, yeah, it was a big learning step for a lot of the boys. That's why they call it a test match, mate. So, um, yeah, stoked how we kind of stuck to it and and got the win. But, yeah, it wasn't pretty. But um, some good learnings for a lot of young boys and um, some senior campaigners as well. So, yeah, it was all good. Yeah, from your point of view as someone who's obviously been around the team for a long time, how much will those guys benefit from a test match like that? going into what will be a couple of really tough games to, to finish the tour? Oh, hugely, mate. Um, I think, like, especially with the States, because we started so well, all those young boys probably had a little bit of an expectation it was kind of going to flow into a, the Italy kind of game, I reckon. But Italy play a lot of quality opposition this season, you know, I suppose veterans and that kind of thing. So we had to... You could see the way we try to play straight away, throwing like 50-50 passes and stuff and stuff like that, just trying to earn the right. So, yeah, every game's different at Test Match Footy, and um, I reckon they'll take a huge amount of it out of it. And I hope I hope they do, and um, they'll definitely be better for it. So, yeah, I've got review tomorrow, dissect it a little bit, um, and get some good learnings for those young lads and myself and a few boys uh, going forward. Was it maybe a Sorry, James. We'll just um, we'll just keep going. We'll come back to you if possible. Okay. Um, Liam, jump in. Liam Napier. Hey, yeah, Dan. Hope you pulled up well, mate. Um, hey, just um, what are your rec recent uh, recollections of Ireland? Um, I think you've split the last five games, three two, one and one in Dublin. I think you might have scored that try. If, you know the the comeback try, or at least you know you gave it gave a pass. Um, and that, so yeah. What, what are your what are your memories of of, of those tight tussles with Ireland? Yeah, um, it's funny how you always think about the ones that you've lost. <laughs> to be fair, uh, yeah, some good. Battle. I, I kind of was thinking about um, after the games. It's like how close each game has been in that last five years. Like they've always been down to the wire um, and could have gone either way. So yeah, real tight battles and. Um, I'll probably apart from the the World Cup one, but we I suppose we were hurting a little bit from the previous results and but yeah they had a great win in the weekend so I, I expect another tight tussle. Um, they're a different beast at home I reckon, you know they'll be feeding off the crowd and um, full stadium so yeah it's a great challenge for us and yeah it's good but good to be back in Ireland mate it's a, it's a great place and um, it's a shame we can't get in a few Guinnesses but yeah um, yeah looking forward to the week ahead. And just um, is there a sense? I know you've only just arrived, but uh, that the you know the business end of the tours arrived the last three weeks, sort of um, blowout results, but um, to sort of headline test it in the year, do you expect there to be a real edge competition for places, and and you know as it builds to a real sort of climax? Yeah, hugely. Like um, yeah, obviously, first week is is Ireland, obviously France the next week, but yeah, I think um, these are two big you know, two big battles and, um, yeah, we watched the game against um, France to Argentina last night. So, we've, yeah, we watched the, um, the highlights of the Ireland game and, yeah, I think the intensity of the edge, so a massive week for the leaders and the coaches to lead that and, um, you know, prepare the boys and get around the boys who are playing and wh whoever's in there to, you know, make sure they can come out Saturday and, and, and come out humming because it's going to be a tough battle. Cheers, mate. Cool. Okay, we'll go to um, Jamie Wall and then Mark Hinton. Hey, Cosy. How are you? How are you going, mate? Nice, um, yeah, cheers, bro. Hey, um, just on uh, your position at the moment, um, you know, front rows scoring tries or hookers scoring tries used to be something that was kind of a little bit of, you know, oddity. Um, now you're actually statistically probably the most likely guy on the field to be scoring tries. Uh, has, it, has there been a mindset uh, change among you guys, like the, the hooking group, um, just around your responsibility for that, like to be putting points on the board, because you 
reverted to, I, I guess, switched to doing line-out drives quite early in that game, but a bit earlier than we would normally expect from the All Blacks? Yeah, it was probably a stage of the game that we needed to, I suppose, assert a bit of dominance because we weren't getting too much reward. So, um, yeah, it just kind of happened at the time. But I think it's just the theme of World Rugby at the moment with the drives. I don't know if it's like the, th- the hookers just get the lucky job of hanging on to a drive and, you know, falling over the line kind of thing. But, yeah, it's funny. Eh? It's, I reckon it's just a theme that's kind of happened for the last three or four years that, the drives have come back into rugby in general and the hookers are getting all the rewards. <laughs> so, but we, yeah, and we're just, like I said, we're the lucky ones. But, yeah, it's, I think it's a good way to um, assert a bit of dominance and get your, get the forwards into the game if they haven't um, been getting in much reward or, um, you know, like how we're getting better at the breakdown a little bit in the game yesterday. yesterday. So, yeah, it's a good, I think it's a good cause for us at that time to get ourselves in the game. and. Um, keep the, st- the scoreboard ticking over. And obviously, you know, you get to score tries, so that's fun. But, like, is it something you guys enjoy? Like, do you, do you like rugby being played that way? I wouldn't say no to a try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because the Africans used to do it quite a bit. You know, Malcolm Marks, I think he scored, like, 30 tries for the Lions one year, and we were like... You, you, as a you know one of those hookers oh what's he, he's doing nothing and now you're getting the tries you're like happy days so oh I think it's just the way it is it's just like I said it's just a thing that's happened amongst New Zealand and the super teams and um it's just carried on that trend and like I said it's it's good at times sometimes you see teams that go off the top of the line and want to play but I think it's how the game's going and like yesterday was a good time for us to you know roll up our season get into a bit of work and um you know, like I said, get some points on the on on the board. So yeah, I think it, dep- it depends how the game's going, the tempo of it, and, and how you're playing as well. But it's all good. Yeah, nice one, bro. Cheers. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, um, Mark, jump in, and then we'll go to Tom, and then Richard Nola. Yeah, good day, uh, Colsey. Um, um, congrats on your performance uh, yesterday. Fantastic to see, mate. Um, listen, you talked about Ireland and and the tough test against them. <coughs> From you know, typically when they're when they're at their best and challenging you, what makes them such a tough fight? What do they do well that kind of that kind of challenges you, Colsey? From on the top of my head, I think it's their defence. I remember last time they just keep turning up. Like it seemed like there was no space for us to tack. I remember the last the last game yeah, over here, then we lost. I remember they just keep yeah. That was the one thing that stood out for me. Was that they just keep turning up. So. Um, I suppose it's about finding where they their space and stuff like that. So yeah, I reckon the, the defence was awesome. Um, they put some big shots on and, and put us under pressure. And I think yeah, may may played a bit too much footy. So I suppose the kicking game might come into a bit. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a ten, so <laughs> told what to do and run around the paddock. But yeah, um, yeah, that's the one thing that sticks out of my mind as a yeah. defence. Cool. And listen, just I mean, just in, I, I know you only sort of operate one one game, one day at a time, even in this environment. But obviously these next two tests, you know, have a pretty decent chance to kind of define your year in many ways. Um, you know, you, it, it's a big finish. Are you guys conscious of, I guess, you know, the challenge ahead and the need to kind of go to that next level for this last fortnight? Yeah, massively. Um, we know, we're we under no illusions. Like if we don't perform this week, then you know, kind of takes a lot of that hard work that we've worked so hard, or the boys have worked hard all year to kind of, um, you know, turn things around from last year. So, yeah, like I said, still week at a, still one week at a time, and but two massive games against two quality posi- op, uh, quality position opposition. So um, that yeah will help this season. Um, you know, see, and hopefully people look back and say it was a great season, but whatever. But yeah, we'll get um get Ireland going first and see how we go. Sorry, mate. That was a... <laughs> I was trying to get the word out. <laughs> You're doing well, Cozy. Okay, Tom, jump in. Thanks, Jack. Good day, Dane. Hey, um, I think it was against Fiji where you you tweaked your calf, your hammy in the warm up, um, and obviously that's kind of what what started you off on not being able to play for a bit. Do you have any sort of hoodoo going into the into the warm up over the weekend? And are you are you sort of preparing differently on match day, or you know you sort of pretty happy that it was just a one-off kind of issue. 
Yeah. Ah, uh, good question, mate. Oh no, it's it probably was in the back of my mind a little bit. It's probably um with the in the USA game. Like you obviously had the same routine and the first kind of sprint I did, I was in my back of my head. But yeah, once I got through it, mate, it was sweet as and um just been working hard with Pete, the, the physio and Gilly just to kind of um yeah keep the body going and doing things a little bit differently to I suppose what all that matters is getting on the field and that's when you all your work is done. So yeah, I've had to alter a little a couple of little things to um I wouldn't say conserve the body, but just make sure I'm <laughs> humming for, for game day. Yeah. So yeah, it's just about being a little bit smarter and um yeah, working with the trainers to make sure I'm ready to go. Awesome. Cheers. And just just one other one. You mentioned sort of the some of the younger guys, you know, maybe expecting the, the points to come a bit earlier against Italy. Um, as obviously a guy who's, you know, he's played 70 or 80 odd tests. Um, you know, when that's happening, do you sort of on the field, you you clunk a few young guys' heads together and tell them what to do, or do you sort of you pretty happy letting them, I guess, learn and just figure it out for themselves how, how it works? Oh, I was trying to tell them, <laughs> trying to tell the group. Um, yeah, like you don't want to see them make mistakes. And um, I suppose me and Sammy, I think Luke Jacobson did a good job just trying to um, bring them in and just like see what's working and what's not. And we were giving them, you know, the team um, a little bit of direction. And, but it just probably took a while to get through some of those years. Um, and we were all guilty of them. It wasn't it wasn't just the young boys. It was a, it was a collective um, thing. You know, we can't. There's no blame game here. Like, yeah, I carried and gave away a stupid penalty and stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, they'll be better for it. And once we dissect it tomorrow, there'll be a few things that can stick out to, um, I reckon, make them better rugby players. And there was never no panic out there, which was good. It just the things we're saying were just taking a little bit longer to take on board. Um, a bit like my kids. So, yeah, it was like dad playing with the kids. <laughs> But it was awesome. good. Bloody enjoyed it. Good to be punning on the pump once in a while. Um, but yeah, it was awesome.